What's good creators? Welcome back to Monzo Media. Today we're going to look at masking in Luminar AI. So I'm going to show you some quick examples of masking and within Luminar AI there's two basic ways to do masking. The first way is through local masking. If you go to the right here underneath your tools you're going to see local masking. Click on that and then once you click on add choose basic and you will see the various options you have here with local masking it's limited uh, to what you can control for example the warmth the exposure contrast etc and then the second way is to do masking based on the option that you are using so for example let's say i'm gonna use dramatic here and you'll see as i bring my slider up you will see the add mass function there and that pretty much works for any of the other options here like if i click on mystical you see that there's a mask already applied to this image so the first technique on masking I'm going to show you is very easy to do. One of the earliest photo editing techniques that I learned earlier on in my Photoshop days. I don't know what the, the proper name is called, but I call this selective coloring. And what that is, is let's say I went into local masking here and I brought the saturation down to do black and white, but I wanted her eyes to be in color. So this is where I would apply the mask. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to decrease the radius of the brush. You can increase or decrease the size of the brush by using the bracket keys. So I just want the color of her eyes to pop out. So, so I'm going to go to the local masking here and click erase and you're going to see the screen turn red. So that red means that the mask has been applied to the whole image. And what I'm doing here now is erasing that mask. So now you see the blue comes through. Now don't worry about this part where it's showing through. We can correct it. I'm going to do the other eye here. And basically, again, I'm just deleting the mask just from the eyes. And if I want to correct the parts where I, you know, deleted here, I'm going to add that mask back. And you can add it just by clicking on paint. And basically what you're doing is you're painting the mask back on or deleting the mask, depending on the look that you want. So now, as you see, the eyes are in color while everything else remains in black and white. So what I'm going to do now is show you another image that I've worked on with one of the photos that I've done. And basically what I did here was I use a mask for a separate mask for the background. If you see, I turn it off here. See how the background's lacking color. It's very flat. You know, I purposely shoot in raw and in a very flat profile so that I can color correct afterwards. So if I turn that mask back on, then you see now how the color pops. It's more contrasty. And also I've used masking for just this subject on its own. So I'm going to show you how I did that from scratch. First, we're going to go in adjustments here and revert to original. As you can see, the original image is uh, fairly flat, but Overall, I'm happy with the composition, the exposure, everything else. Now we're just going to give this photo some life. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to touch up the, the color of her face a little bit. So now the next step, I'm going to go back into local masking here.
click on add basic and now what I'm going to do is bring out the background colors and adjust that so I'm going to play around with you know the settings I'll make it warm bring the exposure down just a bit give it a bit of contrast uh, there's really no highlights that are bugging me except for the corner there bring that down a little bit and the shadows look good to me now here's a little tip for you this is kind of I call it fake bokeh <laughs> So with structure, if you bring it to the right, it makes the details more bold. You know, it gives it more uh, detail, right? But if you bring it down to the left, it blurs it out. It gives you kind of that fake background blur. So I'm gonna add that to the background. I'm gonna add a bit of saturation and vibrance for it to pop. And now what I'm gonna do is click on the erase here and make sure you're on paint mask uh, you can do radial and gradient masks but we'll get into that on a more advanced tutorial on masking and basically all i'm going to do is delete the mask from the subject you see how there the mask is applied to the whole image all i'm doing is deleting the mask from the model here and there you go. So if I do a before and after, you see how that background really pops now. And I've deleted the mask from the subject so that the original changes I did in the beginning stay the same. Now, as I mentioned before, there's another way to use masking. And this applies to the various options you have here. So. For example, if let's say I wanted to use this mystical feature here under the creative option here and what mystical does, it gives it kind of this soft look. And let's say I wanted to apply the soft look to the background. As you see, if I take this off, it kind of blends the colors together, gives it a very soft focused look. I'm going to use this option, just make it a bit brighter, make it a lot smoother. I don't want the saturation too high, but I do want it to pop. Let's warm it up quite a bit there. So again, you see it's affecting the whole image, but now you will see on the tab here that it has an add mask option. So I'm going to click on that. And again, what I'm going to do is just delete it from the subject. And there you go. So if I turn this off, this is how it looked before. Now I'm quite happy with that. I turn this on and it just gives it a bit more kind of almost looks like a painting as well. So I hope that was helpful for you. And of course, if you had any questions, let me know in the comments below. So I want to say a quick shout out to the most recent subscribers who have come along on the channel. I appreciate all of you guys hoping that the channel grows even more this year so that I can reach more people. And, and as always, if you have any requests on photo editing or how to use your camera, things like that, let me know in the comments below. And grab a drink, have a drink with me, and we'll talk to you then.